Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Ming Luke, Program Director for Festival Napa Valley's Blackburn Music Academy. I'd like to welcome you to these special masterclasses provided by the Met Orchestra Musicians. Members of this great orchestra have been regular teachers and performers at Festival Napa Valley since its inception in 2016, making this a natural fit for our students. There are 10 classes throughout the month of July and some classes will be rebroadcast on the Met Orchestra Musicians Facebook page with a live chat. The Met Orchestra Musicians are donating their time for this class. Please consider making a tax deductible donation at metorchestramusicians.org. I also want to note that these masterclass series are dedicated to the memory of Maestro Joel Revson, who is the founding conductor of Festival Orchestra Napa and the assistant conductor at the Metropolitan Opera for over 20 years. He passed away on May 25th, 2020 uh, from complications of coronavirus. You can read more about him at joelrevson.com. So today we are really excited to have Dove Shenlin and Catherine Rowe of the Met joining us. Welcome Dove and Catherine. Hi, great to see you, me. Great to see all of you. Yeah, and we will also have playing for them uh, Jennifer Kim, Gavin Peck, and Joseph Shanks. So we'll start with Jennifer Kim. Great, bravo, fantastic. It's, it's really great to hear you and I remember you from last year, so good to see you. I'm sorry we can't all be together in California this year, but uh, maybe next year. Anyway, um, so at, at the beginning, I would just say that, uh, you know, what, what you want is an impression of real smoothness all the way through. And it, it's tricky because the theme has this kind of horsey dotted rhythm, right? The, it somehow has to be very peaceful, especially after the first movement, which is so violent, right? So all of a sudden, it's da -da 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 -da. I urge you to think of a little bit of a, a swaying in one. So, so it doesn't get too, okay? I heard a little bit of all those 30 seconds. You're doing a great job with the rhythm, but uh, it, you shouldn't. they shouldn't sound kind of clip-clop, clip-clop, right? So um, if we can sort of think, um, Go a little. Okay. Um, and you did great with the this thirty second and the sixteenth, making them different. I heard that. 
but again, a little more of a lilt where one bar is strong and one bar is weak. One bar is strong, one bar is weak might really help. Um, and, uh, and always a direction to the bar line. So, da, da, da. so you know, uh, not uh, if you go, but not. I personally slur these. Uh, okay, for fewer bow changes. Yeah. No one will notice. I mean, especially behind a screen, no one will notice. They'll just think you have an amazing legato. Um, why don't you try it to uh, try it again see if you can get some of that lilt okay good good so so see if you can get more lightness on the first c so lift so it should be it should be uh, the sound should be sent out so it, it, you lift it but the sound continues it's not short a dot isn't short in this kind of music it's it's, it's lifted That. Just try, just try the first, the first thing, and imagine the note trailing off forever. Imagine it going. Get your bow circular, kind of going. Good, good. Even more follow through. Yeah. Good. That really sounds terrific. When you now, now, when you do that, get the same lifted feeling. Only catch the next thing. Try it. Good, good, good. That was terrific. That was so much better. I love that. That was really musical. Uh, and I was just gonna. I was just trying to do what would probably work better in person than online, which was to keep talking you through as you were playing. But I realized that can't really do that. Anyway, uh, the left hand alive and keep the keep air in the right hand. Don't get stuck with the right hand. Um, and try maybe in, could you try in bar four and five, uh, do them in one bow just for fun because you're getting stuck at the tip. Da, da, dee, because this is twice as long. Da, 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 da. Yeah, keep going. Wait, am I doing that starting on down bow or up? No, you, I think you're up bow at that point. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's good, so you don't get stuck at the tip because uh, you were going da da dee, da 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 da, and then you had no more breath left, and it was getting kind of the sound was getting uh, cramped. Um, so that was terrific, and and, and I love what what Kat was saying is perfect. Um, could you try one more time and just get a little more of the one in one kind of lilt? Mm -hmm. I would love, just love to hear a little more, maybe da da dee da 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 less da 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 more da da dee da da less. The more or less. Just to try it. Even exaggerate it a little bit. If it's sing songy, we'll 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 we can go back the other way. Okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, uh, the whole bar in one bow. Sorry. I, uh, oh, okay. Don't get yeah. If, if it's too confusing, don't don't worry about it. Oh, no, Just, fine. But that that was that was already feeling much better. Keep, try try one more time. You know, maybe exaggerate it a little. Great, that's much better. Yeah, I think. So at bar twenty-three, for example, you know, you have what looks like undifferentiated sixteenths, but the melody is dun da dun 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 da dun da dun dun. So, in other words, there's a sense in which you really you should be playing three and then one. <laughs> Yeah, 
if the committee can hear the piece while you're playing the excerpt, then you've done a good job. So if you if you have it in your head that, uh, and then later the same thing. Uh... So when it's in three, play in three. When it's in one, play in one, even though your part has nine notes to a bar, right? Try the first one because we're, we're gonna get to that pianissimo spot, which can be much pa more passive. But when you get to the two pianissimo notes, no vibrato and uh, maybe even upper half. And then if you have to stop to retake, retake cleanly. Don't be in a hurry because I heard, okay? So instead, okay, you, you, you never have to apologize for, uh, in orchestra especially for, um, you know, cutting off a little earlier from the end of a long note to get to the next character. Good. So even though it's fortissimo, it's a big, a weird, it's a, actually an A-flat summing chord uh, and that, that, that then goes to it. So it's still unresolved it's, and it's going all going to the next bar. Dun, dun, ba, ba. Yeah. So if you could be like. <laughs> if you can get a little more suppleness flowing. you have two of these and then you start to have a long-term crescendo and the phrasing starts going bar by bar right mm -hmm. so it's two bar units I'm crescendo I know it says forte but we have a structural problem because it's crescendo 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 think of the bottom as like mezzo piano and you you hit the forte at the top of the second bar but then you come back down Okay, because otherwise you hit the maximum way too early and we, we, need, we need a sense of perspective so that it goes all the way to six. But could you try once really irrationally speeding up the bow in the middle of it? So start, think of the first two notes. Like that. So really the first two notes use this much bow and the next three use the whole rest of the bow. Try that. Good. Do it in the tempo, do it in the tempo. Good, save even more, save even more. Watch, watch, watch your bow and try to really use two inches on the first two notes. Great, the, the upside was great. Now we got to work on the down. So do the same thing in reverse on the second bar. Dee da dee uses most of the ball and then you fade out. Okay, your bow is a little too slow at the frog. Uh, so you're si kind of sitting on those first two notes. Da 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 dee 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 dee. No. Da 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 dee dee da dee. Try it. Really use bow on the first three notes of the second bar. Better. The 
dotted quarter notes to sit a little bit. They're they're a little not going anywhere, okay. uh, and so they're almost too they're almost too long before you come to the next thing. Uh, and this is this is uh, you know one longer phrase. So maybe again where it says espressivo, try to think that starting a little less. So maybe you started B mezzo piano. Think this is maybe starting from mezzo forte. Uh, you know, and and you've got eight bars to go. This long thing. Uh, it's still in two bar units and then one bar units, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suggest that you break up the reason is it just gives you more room if, if, if you have to play all two bars in one bow you're going to be suddenly pianissimo on the third note but it should really have a bar to exhale It's good, really good. Again, you've got to separate the characters, even if it takes a tiny second. I, I hear, I hear you preparing the forte. Okay. It, we really have to not know that the forte is coming. So, so let it really and get a clean start on the E. So it's a it's obviously a new phrase. You're not uh, trying to bleed one into the other when it's not supposed to. There could be a conductor who wants it wildly off the string for a really wild effect, but my instinct is you can be quite on. It's going to be more powerful. so clear and what you really want in audition is clarity like they should be able to take yeah. dictation and know exactly what's written on the thing even if they didn't know the piece so <laughs> thanks so much sure next we have gavin peck hi gavin how you doing hi i'm doing fine how are you Okay, great. That's a really tricky excerpt, and you you obviously know it really well. It's really clear. Um, let's talk about how we could make it clearer. Uh, again, like the thing in an audition is, I, I feel like um, the, what they want is for everything to be really clearly defined, so they know that everything that you're doing is reflects exactly what's in the score. And I think there's a sure. this this thing. Uh, it, it it it's it's definitely fast um, in the orchestra. But for me, for an audition, this might be a little too fast or too hurried. I think you need rhythmic structure, and I'm missing the rhythmic structure right now. So right away, the 16th went faster than the eighth note that you set up. So if you can find a way to get the eighth note to relate to the 16th, um, I think I would try up bow. There's a sense of up, da 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 dum bum bum up, da 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 dum so. So it's less hurried. So this rhythm, rhythm. 
do you practice this with a metronome? I assume you do. But don't be afraid to use the metronome, even sometimes playing very, the, having the metronome go very fast, like play eighth notes, dun, 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 tick, 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 and see where you line up within there. Because I think you'll notice a lot of your second eighths are late and then fast. Dun, da, 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 dun, da, 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 that kind of thing. You um, want to try it? Sure, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll try the up bowing, maybe. Try. Right. Think. Yeah. Good, that already sounds better. Just do the lift. Sure, sure. Just do that. Good. Yeah. It also sets you up bouncing because you'll be a little bit in the air, which is just where you need to be to, to make the bow bounce. Yeah. Good, that's much better. Don't rush though in the last, you, you do were great on the hard stuff and then you rushed on the easy stuff. You did. No. Sure. But keep ticking in your head. Da, 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 yeah. Da. yeah. Okay, go on A. Yeah, um, the structure again. Dun, da, 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 dun, 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 Good. Go on. Okay, yeah, do this. Bowing for now, if that's okay. Sure, yeah, do your yeah, bowing, yeah. do your bowing. I don't want to confuse you. Totally do your bowing. Later you can experiment. Um, just watch the 16th. They're always a little faster. You're, you're usually playing them faster than the tempo you've set up. Let's put it that way. Personally, I, I would go. I would do down and retake. Did you, is that what you did? For the stability. Uh, I, Are you uh, doing as it No, I didn't do it. Uh, yeah, I was doing it as it comes. No, yeah, try the retake and always down. I think that's more regular. So, but the eighth notes are up, is that? No, no, every, everything is down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Try once again and be rhythmically stable. Dun, da, 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 use that, use the retake to give yourself enough time that you get to the next thing. Good, that's much more stable. Now let it flow a little. Um, okay, let's go on to B. You want to do B? Sure. Okay, good. Watch the half steps. Uh, especially when, when the A flats are too high. Especially yeah. when, when things are going fast, half steps need to be even closer. It's a weird, okay. it's an oral optical illusion thing that uh, both steps need to be bigger and half steps need to be smaller. When you're in your room and there's no real acoustic and you know, you're trying to play as fast as you can in the coordination and everything, it's very different when you get into a big space, especially if the audition you're taking is in a hall and it takes time for the sound to get from place to place. And it's very easy for things to get garbled and mushed. Plus you're gonna be nervous. Adrenaline is gonna make you play faster, not slower. So right. always plan to take one edge, just a tiny edge off. And, and don't try to be too, 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 too tiptoey soft. It just needs to be really okay. clear. If they want it softer, they'll ask you, but get it clear under your hand once. And not, not, not loud, just, you know, clear. Sure, okay, sure. okay, sorry. Great, great. The A flats are still, A flats are still sharp. You want Great, I, I'm sorry, I was just, I, was, I wanted to go back to those A flats. Just, could you try it once slowly? Great, try, try once, try once legato. Much better, much better. Yeah, sometimes you need the legato just to hear so that the note sounds long enough so you can tell what's happening. When you're playing through it fast, there's a lot of you know clicks and you may think it's okay and you're missing something. Uh, okay, sure. let's go on to the tune, the big tune. 
Uh, do you want to get into it from... Uh... Yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Ugh, whatever. Okay, good. Can I stop you? Okay, so so yeah. the first thing to watch is the structure of the eighth notes because you're rushing, right? So just get, let's do, can you just do that? The three notes. Good, now go back. Good, except actually now the first eighth note wasn't quite long enough. So. Let's just do. Good. Great. Now connect. OK. OK, good. That, that, that was much better. The beginning was made much more sense. That was much more what it looks like. And I heard the eighth note and the 16th. Then in the fifth bar, curiously, you seemed slower. So again, this needs a lot of metronome practice. So you always know your tendencies and you can correct for them because, uh, sure, yeah, because yeah, right there, it needs to just flow. Um, I think a good way, again, like, like I was saying earlier with the Beethoven for Jennifer is really don't think of it as six notes or even three beats. Think of it as a bar. So, uh, Okay, so uh, so the go to those, and then you can have more of a, a hairpin for the third or the fourth. So it's one bar, one bar, two bars, like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry, let me try that again. That's okay. Take your time. Okay, terrific. And then do. So you learn how each group of six connect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, but every time you have the eighth notes or, or the quarter note also, you need to, you're not separating enough to the next thing. So uh, you're a little early. Think in one. It's an upbeat to the next thing. Okay. So okay, yeah, I guess uh, I was I was worried that when when I was slowing down because I slowed down around there, I was worried that maybe I was coming off the the quarter note too late. No, that's uh, not the but issue. Maybe there's more time, and then I just need to make sure exactly. that exactly there's more time, but then you have to be in tempo. Yeah, you want to try it again okay. from C? Do, do try the whole thing again. Uh, from C. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a tricky one at the end. I, I personally, I would just go to the A string. I, I know, I know the, I know, look, the thing goes up, right? It's pianissimo. And then in the second one, it's piano. So, so you have, you have a little compositorial authority for getting louder. And I know the arguments about staying. But it's just too risky and the, the intervals are gnarly. I would just stay with the A string. Just be very calm. Yeah, I see you're getting tight in your upper arm. Somehow you have to uh, let the little muscles do more, a little more. Feel it in your fingers, OK? Uh, OK, so I want a little more finger motion, a little more wrist uh, action, and a little less trying to guide it from the up here. OK, hit it.
Great. That's really a, a lot in there. <laughs> and you did a great job. It's, it's, it's tricky. Um, where should we start? Let's see. Uh, so um, for me, again, I, I would, uh, the rhythmic structure is important. I feel like the, the first half note right away was a little too long. So again, I urge you to think in a little bit bigger units, not faster, but in units of Okay, so you don't get stuck bogged down with the, uh, and there was one spot in particular where you have that scale, scale of after B. I heard you trying to make 16th triplets and then 32nd. It's not about that. It's that passionate, you know, side of, of Don Juan. So we, we don't want it to be, you know. So again, in general, yeah, I would say, and, and then for example, I don't feel, uh, in this first phrase, it's tricky to hold together because there's so many different kinds of, of expression. So, and then, so that was too slow. It wasn't. It didn't feel in the same flow, right? That we've gotten to. So keep it going. Okay, <laughs> it's what Kat was saying before. You have to really know where it fits in the context of the entire score. Uh, and, and it would be, if ideally, I wanna be able to hear the piece while you're playing just the excerpt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanna hear the brass, I wanna hear this violins connecting to you, right? So this, it's not wait for it and then play. No, the violins lead right into you. Or not the violins, flutes, whatever. Anyway, the point is that it's that is one idea and that you really connect one thing to the next. I think technically you've got this more or less. We've got a few things to fix, but it's it's really a question of stringing it together into phrases that make sense. You're saying that really it's just flair. This is pure flair. That's the essence of Don, of, uh, Don Juan. He's 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 all flair and and style and no substance, right? He's just <laughs> the, the yeah. He's the seducer. He's, so it's all meaningless, cadential, brilliant, and you know I think that's. One of the brilliant things about this setting of Don Juan is that it really illustrates, you know, all that virtuosity illustrates the character really well. So, yeah, so do the whole thing the, from the beginning. Good. Great. Much better. That's really good. Um, yeah, still always keep the momentum going. This, this is pure momentum, this beginning. Don't be late. And if you want to sing on those, those are fine. But don't let it slow you down, tempo-wise. Sure. Something like that. OK. OK. Uh, you want to go on to the second entrance? Sure. Okay, notice, notice this is much slower than you started the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it's not okay. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, they should be roughly the same tempo. Um, this, right. If this is the tempo that you feel comfortable in in command, then by all means, play this tempo and play that one at the beginning, too. I didn't mean to urge you to be too fast. It's not about speed. Um, it's about clarity, but also, you know, momentum and, and character. So this right. tempo is fine. Play this tempo for now. Just be aware that ultimately you need to harmonize those tempos. In fact, I've always fascinated, and when you hear when you hear this piece live or in concert or in recording, you don't even hear the strings until they reach the top. It's like. <laughs> it's just this giant wave, right? Because really the big tune is by yum, you know. So um, just 
keep it moving. Don't worry about too much about the notes. Uh, I mean, worry about the notes, but <laughs> do a nice yeah, crescendo down to the bottom each time. Uh... <laughs> Good. So, so even though it, even though it says fortissimo there, I like to think of it as mezzo forte and then crescendo to the end of the phrase, right? Okay. So, because yeah. really, what's happening is you're coming out of relief into relief, out of relief and into relief, right? Da da dum ba da 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 is the tune, and then suddenly you're not really the tune; you're an effect. So, da 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 dum da da dum da 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 so actually start from the beginning, before A, before A. Start from two before A, I think. three F's, you know, the trombones are playing, all the strings are playing, it's chaos, there's like a mushroom cloud of rosin over the stage. <laughs> Take it a little bit lower down, so, you know, you get this, uh, this is... Something like that. I mean, sorry about the notes, but you, you get the idea, right? It's like, uh, make, make a shape out of it. Um, and take your time to get to the top. You, you, you actually, you're nailing it every time. It sounds great. I wish I could do it. So um, do it once from, and you know what? I, I, I suggest this Boeing. So you don't have to retake because it feels a little disappointing. And the, 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 the brass won't be doing that, obviously. So, um, <laughs> So in the three four. So sorry, how do you get to uh -huh. Oh, okay. So you're hooking those two. Yeah. Yeah, and then long. Accented but fairly long. Okay. Yeah, try it. That's what you do. At the, that's actually what you did at the beginning. That's actually what you did at the beginning, I think. In the fifth bar, third bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is. Right. Great! So much better. Um, so the trick is to get the poise. Okay, right? So play that once by itself and play it in the calm way you'd like to play it. So get yourself physically set up for the piano. Okay, that's good. Maybe just the, the stroke, more casual, more with the small muscles again. Oh, yes. In other words, yeah, you don't want to make a big, after using, after all these big motions, this has to be small motions again. And the really hard part is coming from right and getting being calm enough. So get a physical, establish a physical sense memory of what you, how you want, what posture and what stroke you want to have in that piano. Okay. And then during the forte, be thinking about your, your destination, your, your, physical postural destination so that when you're done, da -dum, da -da, but you can snap into the calm and small motions and break out of having to use it. Cause I feel like you're getting that piano, but you're still stuck using everything's tensed and you're using big muscles. And so I'm not getting uh, the freedom you need. Could, so could, could you try that once? Uh, just again, start from the piano, N very light, like, you know what they write in, sometimes in Italian, they write spigliato, like just tossed off, you know? Um, yeah, try it once. Yeah. Good. So, that sounds great. Now try it from C, and when you get to the piano, see if you can snap back into that. See if you can aim for that as a as a destination in your memory.
That's great. Just remember to put put a metronome on it because I feel like all of your long notes are a little too long. Da, 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 remember that there's triplets going all the way through. The cellos keep going. So keep hearing those eighths churning. Fantastic. I was doing Beethoven and then Don Juan as well. So, okay. Uh, which which would wanna, be better to start with, do you think? I want to do Beethoven first. I'll, I'll do Beethoven. Okay. <laughs> auditions so in an excerpt like this what do you play what do you not i feel like i was playing too um, much. like how do you know what to play normally when you get to the audition they'll have a cut sheet so they'll have the music printed with exactly the parts they want you to hear in brackets okay but if it doesn't if it's not specified beforehand you're wise to prepare all of it even the bits that look easy because you never know if they want to hear them and you're not comfortable you could do something awkward so right. But yeah, well, usually when you get there, the part, exact parts to play will be bracketed. Um, okay, so um, it's good. I would like to, uh, I think you've got a, a very musical feeling for it. Uh, I'd like to just get a little more rhythmic, again, rhythmic structure and intelligibility and clarity. Uh, and we also need to talk a little bit about intonation because I think um, this, uh, this key, A flat, is a nice low, low sitting key and we need to feel really grounded in that pitch. 
Actually, I, I was going to suggest, I was thinking uh, while I was listening to you that I was going to suggest uh, if you have one of those metronomes, uh, not metronomes, but uh, a tuner. I have this great tuner called Tunable. Okay, so here's how I would practice this. Um, so uh, I would, here. Here's my A, my a flat. <laughs> Okay, doesn't doesn't necessarily work for all of it, but when you it, it works for uh, here. Or maybe the maybe the A flat is better even. So that every A flat you come back to is the same. Okay. Very beginning again, like uh, rhythmically, I feel a little like the dotted rhythm isn't dotted enough. It sounds a little triplety, but I don't want you to do it in a in a snapping way. So try to um, try to think of the thirty second as belonging to the next note. Da, 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 dum, you know, because I, I feel like it's coming. You want to you want to be expressive on it, which is good, but then it's coming too soon. Beware of what I was saying. Don't be too. Don't don't stop the sound in between. In fact, uh, maybe even try uh, try bowing this theme without the left hand. Okay, so with just shadow left hand. Okay, then add. So you get the same smoothness with the right hand, but the left hand is, is playing the right rhythm. Mm -hmm. okay. What I, when you, when you said shadow left hand, would I actually finger the left hand just have the bow detached? F finger it in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But play with the right hand. Right. <laughs> That's tricky. I'll, I'll do the best. <laughs> yeah. No, no, play, play, actually play, oh, put your bow. bow, yeah, yes. with the bow, play, so that you can hear, make it as smooth as possible while your left hand is dancing around, but without actually playing the notes. Yes, sir. Good. Now, now put it together and try and maintain the same smoothness with your right hand. Good. That was a lot better. Yeah, that's great. Uh, again, watch the bow distribution. Uh, be, be careful. Whenever you have a smaller thing, you're using the whole bow, which is going to make it I exaggerate wildly. But um, the danger is that when you have, you know, a beat that's one note and then you have to play two notes, the one note's going to be louder. So if you if you must get down to the frog, lighten the bow very, very, you know, bring it away from the bridge uh, so that it, it's lighter and less pressure and it, and it balances. The two things are roughly equal, even though you have to go twice as fast. Um, okay. Um, do you want this to do part, I have a question about this part because this is an excerpt that's always uh, challenged me with the, the rhythmic aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. Are there, are there other ways that I can practice it? Because I feel like, like you said, I played as a triplet, or then I play it too choppy and right. It's, it's not smooth. So you, that was an exercise you gave me. Are there any other exercises or way of practicing that I could? I mean, that's a good exercise for the, the you know, the smoothness of the right hand. For the rhythm, 
Just to get the rhythm really clear, as to, and then and then when you play it long, you're imagining some of that. Okay. Let's let's try that. Let's try that. Twenty three. So here's this would be a great spot to just put on an E flat drone. Go ahead, play. Right. But you want everything to be stable in the key. This is a solid A flat, A flat, E flat, A flat, E flat, right? So pick a note and, and, and make sure you always hit the same note. And then yes, do exactly what Catherine was saying, which is uh, check all the double, check all the double stops vertically as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to play that 23? Play it once for real and uh, see uh, if you can. Sure. I'm we'll sorry. go into the go into the fortissimo. Yeah, you know, in the course of this passage, I feel like your A flat just it starts in one place and then it, it starts to creep up. Higher. Okay. Keep A flat. Keep A flat in your head as much as possible, so that when you leave A flat for one beat, you're still thinking of it, and you come back to the same one you had in the bar before. Okay. Yes, so yes. think horizontally, so that. Uh, is that you, you've got to hit the same line that you were on. Okay, try, try one. Good, the A flats were good now, but the, now the E flats started to move around a little. So yeah, yeah, yeah. then next time you focus on the E flats. Yes, sir. Can yeah. we try that? Sure. E flats? Okay. Except for the last day flat, yeah, that yeah. was good. And you know the the sforzandos were good. I meant to say this also to Jennifer that uh, don't overdo the sforzandos. They, they want to know that there's a sforzando, but they don't want to be beaten over the head with it. So yeah. not rough. It's not worth losing tone quality. Over. First seven notes were really good. The, the half note is a little too long. Uh, okay, as well. Again, right. like we were saying with Gavin, it's it's, it's the momentum. Okay. okay. So uh, it says in two, practically speaking, it's it's really quite. And it, you shouldn't rush through this first seven notes, but that's a mo that's the most time you have. Okay, that was much better. Uh, 
the, this one, you only have thump ba dum. You only have a quarter note. Bum da, bum ba dum. Ba -da. That's all you got. So I feel like you're waiting. Dun dun dum da 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 dum, and then you and then you rush through the scale. Instead, dun dun da 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 dum. Don't rush through that. Uh, but the beginning was much better now. No one wants to try it on the G on the. I find if you start it on the C string, it's more powerful. You can somehow it's more forgiving. You can sink in because. The, try, try once, uh, uh, in third position right away. Okay. That's the other fingering I have marked. I just... Yeah, because it, it, it's fussy. If you have to play open string, you have to be so careful not to hit the other strings. And you, you, you tend to be lighter. But if you, if you, you can really be powerful with that. OK, OK. Good. Again. Uh, mm. uh. Uh. Okay, so feel the structure. Uh, you, you, you've got to feel the, the you're, right now you're deviating quite a bit from uh, the half note pulse. Okay. Try it once a little slower to make sure you understand the rhythm. Let's do The triplet's a little fast now. Ba da ba da ba da ba dum da 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 dum um dum da dum two three four one two one two one like that flow. Good. Even in this though, you rush the last two beats. Dum dum da 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 ding. So no rush, no rush. Yeah, yeah, this is a tricky beginning also in the orchestra. You know, literally 50 people have to start from nothing and there's nothing on the downbeat, right? So the conductor is sort of like standing there but and w waxed with their arm and prays that everyone comes in in the right place. So if you can give it some momentum in your head before you start. Better, yeah, that's better, that's better. Uh, yeah. Do one more time and go on to the da -da 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 to see if we can get that in the flow as well. Okay. You're slower on the, you're slower on uh, than you were on the other stuff. Okay, so tape yourself and, and sit as a, someone in the jury might do and tap along and see how regularly you can tap with yourself. I swear at auditions, people do that behind the screen. Sometimes they're like tap, tap, tap to see if it lines up. So check, check yourself. No, I know, I know. But check, check yourself. You can, you can tape yourself as many hundreds of times as you want and make any particular take, you know, a first try. And then you listen to it and and see and you'll see for yourself you can show yourself where those things are um okay uh should we go on to the next entrance okay okay it's a little bit the same thing as in the beethoven right da da dum da da dee dum you have da dee dum da da the 16th needs to come later it belongs to the next thing okay so Okay, uh, always play it as late as possible, as if your real melody is, right? Good, that was better, that's better, yeah. Make that space, respect that space. Da -da -dum, da -da 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 -da. Good. Okay, yeah, go on this time. Um, yeah, go on this time. And don't fall in too soon, the second beat of A. Da da dum, da da dum, jugga da 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 Okay, yes, sir. Okay, it, it, 
again, it's also, it's probably partly my fault because I was demonstrating too fast. And it's what I was saying to Gavin as well. Pick a tempo that you can play everything, okay? And if that means that you have to play two bars A slower than you could play it, you still have to play it slower. So I, I think I, I rushed you by playing it fast. Bounce, don't, don't worry about bouncing right now. You eventually, the, it'll, when you play it at the speed, it'll fly off the string a little bit, but basically think on and think of a detaché. <laughs> So I'll do it uh, like, no, what's the best way to see? Like that? Yeah. It, it's like this, okay? Not like that. Yes, sir. Try slowly once, Daga Daga, and see if you can open your forearm and really do it with the forearm. Better, better. Yeah. That's good. Maybe. Maybe even a little more compact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, of course, we have to worry about intonation. I, I don't, I, I yes, can't, yes. it's a little hard to see, uh, you know, exactly what fingering, if you have the best fingering, um, you know, uh, but make sure the half steps and whole steps are really clean. And make sure when you shift, you, you really have this feeling of where you're shifting. And if you have to distort, like in my practicing, sometimes I'll go really slow to get the shift. Because that's the key moment. Uh, so you really feel, uh, you know, you land with your whole hand in the new position. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I think we might be out of time, but uh, but that was great. Yes. Joseph, thank, thank you. you thank much. you again, Dove and Kat. We uh, um, and of course to uh, our participants. Um, we now have a few more minutes, and so we'd like to open it up to um, those that are watching. If we have any questions, of course, um, if uh, uh, Jennifer, Gavin, and Joseph would like have uh, have additional questions too. So, uh, with all of this, with the COVID and everything. What are you guys doing to stay uh, playing music and stuff like that? I know a lot of people are doing virtual things, but that's not the same, so. Uh. It's really hard, you know. Uh, Catherine and I are, are both very lucky to be married to a musician as well. And I think even some of Catherine's kids play. I'm not, I'm not so lucky in that respect. But um, uh, so I've been, you know, I'm lucky that I have a partner to play with. My wife is a violinist, and so we can play duets occasionally. But I'm, I personally have been taking an hour every day to practice, you know, even though there's no performances really, or very little, um, I, I, I need it. I feel thirsty for it uh, to, you know, practice my skills, but also to keep engaged with music, uh, you know, in a tactile, physical way. And, and, and that's it's really important to me. That's why I became a musician. Um, um, the Met Orchestra musicians are donating their times for this class. And so please consider making a tax deductible donation and they have a website set up at metorchestramusicians.org. And some of these classes are going to be rebroadcast, again, as mentioned, on the Met Orchestra Musicians Facebook page. And we hope to have a live chat while that's going on so people can also interact and ask questions while that's going on. And so look for that as well. So thank you, everybody. We will see and, you next yeah, we time. Thank you, Ming. And thanks to everyone who played and everyone who watched. Great to see you all. Bye.